What's going on guys, it's your boy Woodsy out here bringing you my week 4 match for the QDL. Uh, this week we are playing Oxstad, who is coach of the South Beach Shuckles. And he has a pretty purely offensive draft going on for him. Which starts off with, in these two panels here, he has Taipu Coco who got a major buff with the DLC movesets. Getting access to stuff like play rough and close combat. Now, Coco could more reliably run physical sets and abuse its higher physical attack, whereas before I think it would normally run special sets. So, uh, it is very versatile being able to attack on both sides and having 130 speed. It could run even like a support kind of set with screens, defog, and U turn and that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, Coco could really be doing just about any kind of thing that it wants, so I gotta be careful of that. Keldeo is a mod that I think normally I would just be able to wall with Bulu, given that it has Water Fighting Stab and Bulu resists both of those, but in Gen 8 Keldeo they get access to Air Slash, so that is something that I'm going to have to be careful of, as Keldeo itself is also a big threat with a pretty good speed stat at 108 and a high special attack. Uh, Darmanitan is one of those mods that just always runs Choice Item, Life Orb, something like that, gets big hits off. You know what it's going to do, and it doesn't necessarily mean you have a switch in for it. Uh, I think this week I do to an extent, but uh, Darn's just really good at clicking like Flare Blitz U turn. And they has also some options like Earthquake and Superpower to deal with some of its checks. Going into Gudra now, Gudra is a pretty good special wall. It has a, a, like a whopping 150 special defense or something like that, and it also has great offensive coverage move, making it a great assault as Mon. Uh, it's, I, just being able to spam like Draco Meteor, Dragon Pulse even, and having the coverage moves to deal with a lot of his checks. Like I think this week, if he runs like Draco Sludge Wave Hydro Pump to deal with my Draco switch-ins being Tapu Bulu and Heatran, who get beat by that Sludge Wave and Hydro Pump, it is something that could be pretty threatening since it can eat hits pretty well too. Dawn Fan is a great hazard control mon, having access to stuff like Stealth Rocks and Rapid Spin. Uh, I think having those two moves in addition to Earthquake Ice Shard is just a good standard set for it that pretty much works in all situations given that Ground Ice can hit so many different things and it gives it that priority option. Uh, Porygon Z is a great wall breaker with access to like Nasty Plot and Bolt Beam coverage. That could also be a good support mon or like a choice user or something like that, spamming try attack and things of the sort. It has good abilities in like download and analytic as well. Uh, Serena is another good like semi bulky support monk. It also be great offensively. I think it's a fact that is actually the highest stat that it has, although its coverage is kind of meh. But it does get access to things like rapid spin, U turn, knock off, and screens and all that kind of stuff as well. So it could be an annoying mon. Uh, Archeops is a good like suicide lead mon, which I think he might you know try to be running since he is running an offense team. Uh, where it could just run like Stealth Rocks Taunt and then like Head Smash Earthquake or something like that. And um, just, you know, pretty much be a, a really good rock setter. Um, Licky Licky is his last mon, which is like his one like designated bulky pivot mon with good recovery. It's something that I think could just come in, eat a hit, click Wish, and pass that off into his next threat that he wants to get in. So it's like his, uh, it's like his team's glue. So to speak, where that's the uh, the mon that I think is probably going to be doing most of the pivoting around if he chooses to bring it. So getting into how we're going to beat all of that, we uh, I think generally speaking came up with a pretty offensive build to match his offensive pressure because uh, I think my team can eat hits a lot better than his probably can, as well as I'd like to think dish out just as much damage as he can. So starting off with that, we have Choice Bandits and Chino making its debut this week. Uh, it's something that outspeeds this entire team with the exception of Coco or any Sarfers that he wants to bring. And Choice Bandit Tail Slap is just free. He doesn't really have any switch into that period. I think the only thing that doesn't get two shot by it even would be like maybe a Dawn Fan who will absolutely get blown back by a Bullet Seed. Uh, I want to say Archeops probably gets two shot by Tail Slap, but even so, if it doesn't, then Bullet Seed will two shot it for sure. Uh, Facade is there just as a nice option. It's more so just to be like 100% accurate 
stab move because tail slap do be missing sometimes but uh if i somehow manage to get burned you know maybe it could be pretty strong in that sense too but i, I don't really see a situation where that happened and then just you turn to fill out that last slot in case i am in the field on a bad position so past that we have my two walls for the week one physically defensive one specially defensive here uh fizz def swamper is something that matches up very well against a lot of his physical attackers. In fact, they could pretty much be a switch into all of the physical attackers he has, such as Darmanitan, Dawnfan, and Archeops, as well as like a physically offensive Tapu Koko could deal with, although I have to be a little careful of that because it can be running like mixed grass knot or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it hits all of those mons that I just mentioned super effectively with that Earthquake Scald coverage, and it could also just be something that's annoying getting up Stealth Rocks and Toxic and just doing what Swapper does every time you bring it. Uh, this and my specialty defensive wall is Tapu Bulu, who is really mostly here to be taking care of his Keldeo. Uh, I did mention earlier that Keldeo does have that air slash coverage, but even with that in mind, my specialty defensive Bulu is able to guarantee to live two air slashes unless it is something like a choice specs, which I want to say even choice specs if I get, use that protect that I have and get two turns of that leftovers grassy terrain then I am able to even live two Specs Air Slashes from full HP. Uh, past that, we have Synthesis just to be keeping healthy for the game, and that sexy, fairy, ground coverage player of high horsepower, which uh, I think is, can really tear through his team even without me having any attack investment. And uh, Bulu is something that I could get on the field pretty easily, being that it is full bulk. So I expect this Bulu set to be doing a lot of work this week. Um, Crobat is uh, a nasty plot speed control mon this week. Uh, it outspeeds his entire team, except for Coco, who it speed ties, which I think is an interesting match up to go by because uh, both of those mons, of course, are capable of Okoing each other. So if, if those two mons that'll be are on the field at the same time, it'll be interesting to see how we play that out because it is really just a 50-50 hit to who dies. Uh, Sludge Bomb is very spammable against this team and Giga Drain covers the things that do resist Sledge Bomb being like Dawnfan and Archeops. Uh, that Hurricane is there just as a higher base power move because he does have some pretty specially defensive bonds like Gujra and Licky Licky. So Hurricane's just there to be doing a little bit extra damage. You never, you never know, maybe get some confusion hacks, whatever. And then uh, Nasty Plot to round it off just in case I want to be trying to break through one of those mons or even potentially sweeping in certain situations. Uh, Infiltrator is a good ability this week in case he wants to run something like Subcombine Keldeo because I could just ignore his substitute with Crobat and Oko it with Hurricane if he's not too boosted up. And uh, Life Orb just to be making my Crobat really hit harder. Uh, Haxorus is going to be a great option to clean up late game this week. Uh, if it gets a Dragon Dance off, there isn't really much that could... Uh, be an answer to a plus one outrage. Uh, the only things that really could be would be Coco since it is immune to that, but I do have the poison jab coverage to be able to blow that away. And I think past that, the only things that could really live a plus one outrage are like maybe Dawn Fan, who I'm not that scared of, although Dawn Fan can maybe be a little bit of a threat to me with Ice Shard. And then uh, Licky Licky, who I'm definitely not scared of carrying the Lumberry just so I don't have to worry about fusion from the outrage afterwards and I don't have to worry about getting toxics from something like that licky licky or the dawn fan or whatever have you uh dragon claw coverage just in case I don't want to lock myself into that outrage because if I do kill something with outrage and eh, he pretty much has a guaranteed revenge kill with Coco because I'm not able to switch out and I have to click outrage that turn so that is just something to keep in mind uh finally here we have Gallade who is the uh, the mon on my team that will guaranteed outspeed that type of Coco having that choice scarf, uh, and it'll be able to hit it pretty hard with the poison jab. Uh, close combat is really its more spammable move though, as I think Coco really is his only good close combat switch in. And uh, I think because Glade is so naturally bulky on the special side, plus I'm running 80 special defense, it's something that could even potentially buy me some switch-ins to something like a Keldeo, which is why I'm running that facade in case Keldeo wants to click Scald and I get burned. Or uh, even something like that Porygon, because uh, I do have Bulu as like a pseudo switch-in, but Bulu even has a chance to get two shot by Ice Beam if he's running like a Life Orb set or something like that, so uh, it's nice to have other options. And yeah. With that, we'll get into the battle here. Uh, 
So uh, looking for my lead here right off the bat uh, is six bonds. I think the uh, the standard the ones that you would see leading off with would be the first three out front here, being Orky Up, Stomp, and Tapu Koko. So I think to myself, my Swampert is pretty good matchup against all three of those. I mean, it just straight shuts down Dawnfan and Archeops. And even if he does lead Coco, I'm either going to A, scare it out, or B, he is for sure going to click Grass Thought. So I know that I, if he leads Coco on my Swampert, I could just pretty much switch into whatever Crobat or Tapu Coco and just know that I'll be okay. So I do lead that as he does lead the Dawn fan, which is great for me. I don't want to let him get Stealth Rocks up for free, so I do just go for Scald. And I do get the turn one burn on Keldeo as a result. Uh, I don't really think that burn matters too much because I don't think I need Chip on Keldeo long term or anything, but it is still nice. Uh, I am just going to go into my Bulu as it is my designated Keldeo check as he does make a good prediction and go for Air Slash, but it doesn't. I, but that damage reveals to me that he's not Choice Specs, which is good because uh, Bulu will more easily be able to deal with this Keldeo throughout the game. Um, he goes into his Gudra, I imagine expecting me to go for like the Horn Leech or something like that. And I, he's probably like Sap Zipper or something like that, but I do have the play rough coverage on me this week, so I am able to just pick up a kill there. He goes tap a Coco to revenge kill me, but I know my Bulu set really isn't going to lose to a Coco one on one unless he's running Brave Bird, and even if he is running that Brave Bird at that range, I'm able to live one. So I just stay in and click I Horsepower, which I do unfortunately miss, but because I am taking so little from play rough, I could just safely synthesis up the next turn and get back up to full as he goes into his Porygon. I didn't know what this Porygon wanted to do, so I figured it was probably safest to just stay in and click a player off knowing that he couldn't Oko me in any way, maybe like break a Sash or something like that. And knowing that a plus two Ice Beam is coming in here, I know that I could pretty safely go into my Gallade and not get Oko'd by that. And I'll, because I am Scarf as well, I am able to just outspeed it and clean this thing up with a close combat and pick up a little surprise KO there. So, pretty good spot so far. Uh, he's going to go into Keldeo here to revenge kill. He is not in range of a close combat for me, but since I got my Bulu up to full health last time I was on the field, I could just go right back into it again. And uh, take up that Air Slash pretty well. Uh, I believe he does just go for it again, trying to get a flinch or something potentially like that. Because he is uh, down at this point, but he does not get the flinch, and I am able to land the play rough, so that is just another KO for me, for my Tapu Bulu with play rough. So he is going to go to his Dawn fan here, who I ironically can't touch, which you probably realize because I'm not really carrying the grass move. So uh, rather than sitting there and getting toxic potentially by this Dawn fan, I figured I would go Crobat, but he does go for the double Ice Shard. Uh, I knew that the double into or the switch into Crobat there was pretty safe because I, it was a prediction that he was going to click Toxic there, not Ice Shard. But I knew that even if he did click Ice Shard, I was going to be able to live two, and then click Giga Drain and be able to get enough HP back to live the third one as well. So he switches into Coco here on my next Giga Drain, and uh, this is that situation where I was talking about where we're both at a speed tie here. And we both have a good opportunity to just straight kill each other. Uh, at this point in the game, I don't really need Crobat at all. He absolutely needs his Tapu Koko to win the game. So I'm actually, I'm going to just take the, uh, the chances on my speed tie here. But uh, he does outspeed me and go for U-turn. I don't know if this was a speed tie or if he could potentially have been Choice Scarf. I don't really know. But either way, he does not opt to go for the electric move, probably scaring that I was going to go into like Swampert or Tapu Bulu or something like that. So he clicks U-turn, but I did just opt to stay in and click Sludge Bomb. So I'm going to get a little bit of chip off on this Archeops. Uh, and at this point, looking at his team, I know that I could just freely go into my Swampert on this Archeops. I'm not scared of anything it could do to me. So I'm going to take nothing from the Stone Edge, and at this point, Swampert is just going to be able to click buttons and clean up. So, um, GG to Oxstad this week. Uh, we are able to keep our undefeated streak. We are now 4-0 in the QDL. As, uh, as we watch Swampert clean house here. Out of all the mods uh, on my team this week, I was really running an offensive set, or offensive team, generally speaking, and... My two defensive mods were the ones that put in all the work. I don't even, nothing else, barely even got the chance to get to get on the field because those were like my uh, my switching so they were just always on the field and uh, yeah as uh, we watch Swapper here clean up house we will uh, catch you next week and hope to keep our undefeated streak alive